Welcome to New World Now with your host, Kim Corbin. It's one thing to read or write a book that has the power to change our lives. It's another to live the principles and teachings from those books each day on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. Host Kim Corbin's intention with each of her interviews is to empower us to do just that as she talks with authors published by New World Library. They will discuss their personal journeys and share practical tools we can use to be more aware, mindful, and present in our daily lives. Now, here is your host, Kim Corbin. Hello and welcome to the first ever episode of the New World Now podcast. I'm your host, Kim Corbin, and for the last 11 years, I have been lucky enough to work at New World Library, the book publisher that has brought us books like The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle, Creative Visualization by Shakti Gawain, and hundreds of other books that are helping us to awaken and transform our lives and ultimately the world. In the years that I've been at New World, I have learned so much and have been deeply inspired by the relationships and conversations that I've been able to have with our authors who are truly on the front lines of helping to create a new paradigm in this world. These conversations are what inspired me to want to create this podcast so that there's an outlet where these conversations can happen in a deeper and more intentional way and then be blasted out into the universe so others can benefit from them as well. I am extremely excited to be here, and I'm even more excited to introduce my first guest, who is New World Library's publisher and president, Mark Allen, who co-founded the company with Shakti Gawain in the late 70s, nearly 40 years ago, around the time that she wrote Creative Visualization. Mark is also a successful author in his own right, having written books like The Millionaire Course, Visionary Business, The Greatest Secret of All, and The Magical Path, which we're going to be talking about today. Mark also walks his It's Possible to Create the Life of Your Dreams from a Place of Ease talk in such a delightful way that he is the perfect first guest for this podcast. So Mark, thank you so much for being here with me on this first day of our, our new creative adventure. Oh, thank you, Kim. Thanks for that great introduction. I was thinking driving in how New World Now is just the perfect title. Did you come up with that title? I did, yes. Excellent. New World Now. It really sums up something very important in in what all our publishing is saying to people and and in, in what Eckhart Tolle especially is saying to people listening uh I, driving in i was listening to his audio and uh i often do that and that's really his message that uh we need to create it now because that's all we have is this moment he even said uh on one of the audios i was listening to I, we've published two of them i know of his audio talks living a life of inner peace and in the presence of a great mystery and in one of them, he just says, he says, what problems do you have in this moment right now? Right now, you don't have any problem. If you're right, right now, if you don't even think about a problem, you don't have a problem. And I just cracked up when I heard that. And uh, I realized that's exactly the same thing my Zen teacher said when I was in my early 20s. I spent almost six months at a Zen center, and I remember him sitting there saying, right now, this moment, what problem do you have? Exactly the same phrase. Mm. Wow. It's just brilliant. So New World Now is a wonderful title and in a way sums up uh, our 40 years of publishing. <laughs> Beautifully. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad that you like it, Mark. Yes. And I would love for you to share uh, the highlights of your story, which has certainly been a magical path that has brought you to to where you are in life today. Uh, it's, it's so inspiring, and I'd love for you to share the highlights with us. It has been magical. I often just kick back. I'll say to people, it's, uh, this has all been created by magic. Uh, I, I struggled through my 20s. I, I had one key that was very important. I knew from childhood it was important to do what I loved. Uh, 
I refused to listen to my dad, who told me to study business, go into business. I had no interest in business. I wanted to be a musician and an actor. And, and so I knew it was important to do what I loved. And through my 20s, I did all kinds of interesting things and definitely followed my passion. But I had no idea how to make any money <laughs> doing it. And, in fact, I had all these conflicting feelings about money itself. I mean, maybe it's not spiritual to make money. And, uh, I saw the movie Brother, Son, Sister Moon about St. Francis about seven times, and he just gave up all his father's money. He walked naked out of his town and, you know, put a robe on finally and then, uh, you know, lived without money. So I tried to be spiritual, and but it wasn't working. I couldn't pay the rent. I was scrounging a, a word we used all the time to pay the rent. And then I turned 30. And that was the day that changed my life. To this day, in all of my books and talks, I'm I'm usually getting back to the little system I discovered when I was 30, because that's kind of the day I put together all the stuff I'd learned in my 20s. In fact, I remember in my late 20s, I kept having this subconscious image that everything I learned was sand through my hand, leaving me with nothing. That was the image I had. I'd learned all these things. I'd studied with different teachers. In my 20s, I wandered around. I was an actor for a while. I had a rock band for a while even. And I went off. I spent six months at a Zen center and four years at a Tibetan center. And I wandered around. And uh, But I had this image. And I realized later on how important these subconscious images are. I had this image of, it was all sand through my hand. And then I turned 30. I woke up in a state of shock. I realized I wasn't a kid anymore. Somehow it was cool to be a poverty case when you're in your 20s. Or I felt like a teenager still. It was cool to be a struggling spiritual artist, which is, I guess, what I identified with. <laughs> but at 30, this voice said, you're 30. You're not a kid anymore. And that was the day I sat down. I remembered a little game we'd played when I was in my early 20s. I did a back-to-the-land experiment, too. And one night we were sitting around a fire, and this couple said, let's play a game we play at church camp. Let's imagine five years have passed, and everything had gone, has gone as well as you could imagine. What would your life look like? And we went around the fire, and everybody spoke. Went around the circle. And I don't remember a word of what I said then. I've tried to. I don't remember a word, so it had no impact on my life. But the day I turned 30, I remembered that exercise, and I said, this is a good thing to do, but this time I'm going to write it down so I'll remember. And I took a sheet of paper. I wrote ideal scene at the top. I imagined five years had passed, so I was 35. Ooh, <laughs> middle-aged. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then I dared dream, and it took courage, because as soon as I started, doubts and fears just overwhelmed me. But I dreamed five years had passed. Everything had gone as well as I could imagine. What does my life look like? And it amazed me what spilled out, because I'd had no interest in business whatsoever. I'd had all these conflicts about money, as I said. But what spilled out is, I have a successful publishing company that publishes beautiful books that help change people's lives and change the world. And I write beautiful books that help change people's lives. And I've recorded, I record my music and have a successful line of albums. And I have a big white house on a hill in Marin County, California, the most beautiful place. I lived across the bay in Oakland at the time in a little slum apartment in a funky, funky neighborhood where houses had bars on the windows and stuff. So it was a long distance from... My, my dream was a long way from my current reality. Mm -hmm. And doubts and fears all came up. And then I realized the most important, there's two essential things. There's just two as far as I'm concerned and when I look back. You dare to dream. Dare to dream. And then deal with the doubts and fears somehow that inevitably arise. Mm, how do we do that? Well, that's, there's many ways to do that. Therapy is good, a good friend, great books. I hope the books I've written and the books of so many other people 
really helped me a lot there. There's the core belief process that I learned in my late 20s that I have in several of my books where you really actually change your beliefs. You work with your deep beliefs. You get down to what that core belief is or that deep underlying belief, and you change it. You quit telling yourself that but whenever it arises, you become aware of your thoughts and you start changing your thoughts. You start affirming exactly the opposite, in fact. Like I had a very concrete example of it with money. I, I started my own company at age 30. I knew nothing about it. It was a total struggle for five years. And I was deep in debt at 35. I was nearly bankrupt. I remember I was 65000 in credit card debt. And and this was the early 80s, so it was a lot more money. Even. And my company had, the the distributor had gone bankrupt. We were nearly bankrupt. Personally, I, I didn't even have the income to pay my credit cards. I was in deep trouble, and I did the core belief process. You just ask yourself a series of questions. It just starts, what's the problem? And how do you feel about it physically? What are you telling yourself? And then you get down to, then you even ask yourself, what's the worst that could happen? And you look at your worst fears. Then you say, what's the best that could happen? And you, in effect, do a little ideal scene process. Then you ask yourself, why isn't the best thing happening? And whatever excuse pops up, that's your deep underlying belief. Mm -hmm. So I did that around money. And what came up is, why? Well, I'm a fool with money. I'm out of control. That's mm -hmm. what I believed in my early 30s, and that's why I was nearly bankrupt. Mm. And my financial scene was such a disaster. Of course, I believed I was a fool with money, and uh, I was out of control. So I started, uh, then you just say, okay, what affirmation exactly contradicts that and is the opposite of it? And I said, well, I remember I did this in the car, and I even pulled over when this came to mind because I wanted to remember it. I came up with... I am sensible and in control of my finances. I am creating total financial success. And I added, in an easy and relaxed manner, in a healthy and positive way. Mm. I wrote that down. I, I wrote it down in the end in five different places. I put it up in the wall in big type in front of my face, above my phone at work. I carried it around with me. I kept affirming, I am sensible and in control of my finances. I'm creating total financial success in an easy and relaxed manner, healthy and positive way. After I said that a few thousand times over the next few months, it became true in my life. The mm. company completely turned around, became profitable. I realized money is not complex at all. It's very simple. You just need to make more than you spend. It's no brainer. <laughs> and my whole life turned around once I found the right powerful affirmation. So an affirmation is powerful enough to overcome even years of negative or limiting beliefs. When used consistently, right? Yes. You, yes. Uh -huh. Keep coming back to it. Yep. Yep. It yeah. all boils down to our thoughts. The, I believe it's totally true, and I believe it from my experience. The universe says yes to every thought. So when we dare to dream, the universe says yes and starts showing us the simple steps we need to take to fulfill that dream. But then if our next thought is, oh, but it's so hard to succeed, and so few people succeed, the universe says yes, it's so hard for you with that thought, yes. And you erase the initial thought. Yep. You yeah. replace it with, I am now creating the life of my dreams in an easy and relaxed manner in a healthy and positive way. Something like that. Mm, love that. And there's so much in the magical path that are practical ideas that people can use in their lives. And when I was preparing for the interview last night, I decided that I was just going to invoke some of the magic that you wrote write about. And I just said, okay, universe, I'm going to open to a random page in the book and I'm going to see what what you think we should talk about tomorrow, which was really <laughs> fun. And it was amazing how, how it all applied so well. So I'd love to just l share a few of those things with you and have you speak to them a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one is that the written word is a powerful device that can turn desires into intentions. Yes. It all begins with a thought. And a thought is very ephemeral and passes. and But then... 
we make it more concrete. We speak that thought. We put it into words, and it gets more concrete. Then we even make it more concrete by put it, putting it in writing. The day I turned 30, I dared dream my ideal scene. I put it in writing. Then I made a list of goals in writing. Yeah. Then I turned each goal into an affirmation in writing and put it on one sheet of paper that to this day I carry around with me. Yeah, you showed me that you pulled it out of your pocket yesterday. So I'm curious, what is on your current list of affirmations that you have in your back pocket right now? Yes, I started, I remember, with 12, and I'm down to 6 because my life has gotten much simpler. But I begin with very large letters, bold, centered, in an easy and relaxed manner, in a healthy and positive way, in its own perfect time, for the highest good of all, I pray. And then I affirm. Uh, for me now, it's gotten down to six things, six goals. The first is spirit flows through me every moment with its healing energy. Mm. I am at peace with what is. Every moment I feel my being, this is enlightenment. My first affirmation is to affirm my way to enlightenment. Mm. Then the second is New World Library has sales over and I have a concrete number for the year and profits over and I have a concrete number for the year. And I even, I have my bonus in there over and I have a concrete number. So I focus on a totally concrete number. But then I add, in an easy and, it is now coming to pass in an easy and relaxed manner, a healthy and positive way, in its own perfect time for the highest good of all. And that reminds me that these concrete goals, I tell people, make a concrete goal for your annual income, for instance, Mm -hmm. but then affirm that it's happening in an easy and relaxed manner, a healthy and positive way, in its own perfect time. So maybe you won't hit that goal this year, but in its own perfect time, you will hit it if you keep affirming it. Keep affirming. Mm -hmm. And all these affirmations I have... I encourage people to keep affirming them and then make a concrete, simple one-page plan for each goal, for each goal. So I have, from New World Library, I have my one-page plan for the year. What are we going to do? Well, we're going to do about 35 different projects and my simple one-page plan I have for each project. Mm, That's right. Here's another one from the book. As soon as your dream becomes stronger than your doubts and fears, your dream begins to manifest. I love that. I think that sums up the whole process in a way. And how, what advice or words of wisdom would you offer to people who are the, the, I guess that you just did it really with the, with the doubts and fears. It's, it's get clear on what the doubts and fears are and then create an affirmation to counteract them. Right. Right. Yeah. Dealing with the doubts and fears, just getting the mindset that, okay, I'm going to dream and I'm going to go for it. And I know doubts and fears will arise. They do in everybody. It's just part of our personalities. We have many sub-personalities. And we have an inner critic in there. who's, And we have somebody who's fearful in there. Who's, they want to protect us. But they're afraid for us. So they... When we dare dream something really big and expansive, these doubts and fears arise. Dealing with that is the most important work you can do. Eckhart Tolle said it so beautifully in Power Now. I remember I just stopped when I saw this sentence, and I said, this sums it all up, where he, he said almost exactly the same thing as when, you're, when you, your dream becomes bigger than your doubts and fears, your dream begins to manifest. But he just... Put it, he said, get the inside right and the outside will fall into place. Mm, I love that, yeah. Yeah. So, what's the inside right? Well, first you dream, you have a dream. You've got to have a dream and go for it. And then you realize dealing, you can deal with those doubts and fears. It's okay to have doubts and fears. We all do. It's what you do with them, it's how you act in spite of them and keep moving toward that dream. The steps will be revealed to you if you dare dream. They will come. Plans will come. You make simple plans. And the next step will always just be easy and simple and doable. 
I never had to make some big leap. I never even had to take like a leap of faith or come to believe in any of this or anything. It's nothing to believe in. It's just this simple little thing. You just do it and see the results. Yeah, and it, it unfolds for you in a way. Yeah, step by step. Yeah. Here's another one from The Magical Path. There is something you can do to help make the world a better place. There are infinite, an infinite number of possibilities for every one of us. And you also went on in that section to talk about how really by reading the book and doing this work that that, that, that is helping to make the world a better place. So can you yes. speak to that a little bit and maybe offer advice for people who are having a hard time recognizing how they might be helping to make a difference? Yeah. Well, just making your life better you're making the entire world different. And then the first step is we need to fulfill ourselves and take care of ourselves and love and serve ourselves. And then once we do that, it's just natural we end up loving and serving others. And we find, in fact, that our the secret of success is to love and serve others and ourselves in the process. And so when we do make this leap into a a broader consciousness and when we dare dream some expansive dream, it not only makes our lives so much better, it does affect the entire world, everyone around us. Yes. Okay, this one I love because it's so you. Even lazy people can create powerful magic. It doesn't take a lot of time. Right. I, <laughs> one of my goals, uh, when I realized my ideal scene and thought about it a little bit, I tacked on to the end of it. I said, you know, so my ideal scene is to have a successful company, be a successful writer, play music, have lots of time for myself. And, and then I even added, oh, and I want to be lazy, too. That became a goal for me. <laughs> I, I had a rock band. I'd been an actor, and I loved those hours. I love musicians' hours. You never do a thing before one in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> so that was part of my dream, to be as lazy as I want to be. My doubts and fears said, impossible. You've got to work really hard. And I got around them by saying, let me try it as an experiment for a year that I want to go for my dreams, but do it in my own own lazy way. Only work when I feel like it. Don't do mornings. Don't do Mondays. Just work when I feel like it. I remember vividly my doubts and fears said, impossible, never been done. And I said to them, pacing up and down in my little slum apartment, I remember exactly my thoughts even. I said to my doubts and fears, look, if it... Okay, it probably won't work. Most of my thoughts thought it wouldn't work. You can't be lazy and create a successful company and be a writer and musician as well as a business person. You can't be lazy to do all that. It it might be impossible like my doubts and fears felt. But I said, I want to go for it. I want to try being lazy and being successful. And I said to my doubts and fears, give me a year to try this experiment of just working when I feel like it and going for my dreams. They said, it won't work. I said, look, if it doesn't work, I won't be any worse off than I am now. Because at the time, I had no job of any kind. I had no income. I had no family support whatsoever. (laughs) I was scrounging every month for rent. (laughs) So even my dust and fears had to say, well, yeah, I couldn't get much worse. You had no money. I had no money. So... That's how I got around it, saying, let me try this experiment. Go for my dreams, but do it in my own lazy way. Be lazy. I'm not a morning person. I never was. I sleep till 11 usually, which frees me up at night. I I do that. I'll be writing at 3 a.m. <laughs> I love it. You know, I'll play music. I'll get up so I don't disturb my wife. I put headphones on and and sit there and play at 3 a.m. That's my dream life. I'm living it, and I find you can be lazy. Because when I allow myself to be as lazy as I want to be, what happens is I am lazy for a while. I take naps, I sleep late, I do nothing for a while. But then, inevitably, there's a time when I'm just filled with energy, filled with creative energy. And I do things in bursts, you know. Then I'll write a whole chapter of a book or a piece of music or 
make a plan for some, or whatever. I'll have lots of energy for a while, and then I'll be lazy again. <laughs> I love love it, and I love you, Mark. I can't believe that oh. our time is winding down here already. It went so fast, and yes. I'm just so grateful to you for leading this charge for for nearly 40 years now and, and being a part of, of the shift in consciousness that's happening and for so long. Well, thank you, Kim, and you're a wonderful part of it. I really appreciate you and all you do. It. And this podcast, it's wonderful. New I'm, world I'm now. very excited about it. It's yes. going to be great fun. And yes. thanks to our listeners also for being here. If you enjoyed listening to this podcast, we would really appreciate your five-star rating and review on iTunes, which you can do simply by going to the podcast homepage on iTunes and searching for New World Now. So thanks in advance for, for your support in that way, and I look forward to reconnecting with you on future episodes of New World Now. Thank you for listening to New World Now with Kim Corbin from New World Library. New World Library publishes books and audio that inspires and challenges us to improve the quality of our lives and our world. For more information about their books and authors, visit them online at newworldlibrary.com.